family in the Ninth District. And I first met him when we went to a self-governance meeting that Mark Meckler was in charge of in Kim Pruitt. And he spoke there, and it was the beginning of a training course for new candidates that uh, self-governance is promoting and training, help to train to run for office. His name is Manuel Martin, and I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Thank you. Mike was working. Can everybody hear me well? Yes. yes. All right, good. Uh, so, yeah, like uh, Nancy mentioned, I am running for the 9th Assembly District. That does include Lodi, Gulf, El Grove, and southern portions of Sacramento. Uh, but before I get started, I, I feel like I should tell you guys a couple of jokes. It's getting a little bit late, so maybe a little laughter wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. So, uh, John Boehner and, and all the Republicans in the House in the, uh, of Representatives were talking about impeaching. President Obama, and they were having a conversation with Obama, and Obama said, sorry guys, President Biden. <laughs> <laughs> and needless to say, that conversation was dropped, right? <laughs> well, yeah. So Halloween is coming up, and uh, are you guys all pretty excited about Halloween? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I like Halloween. You know who else is excited? Nancy Pelosi. It's that Wicked Witch's favorite time of the year. <laughs> So, needless to say, I'm not a big fan of uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, and that's why I threw her under the bus. <laughs> anyway, so, my name is Amanda Mark. I was born in Lodi, raised on my grandfather's farm. I started working on the farm at the age of 12 years old. I worked full-time on the farm until I was 21. Uh, while I was there, my family, they planted pomegranates, and so I had access to some pomegranate material. And I decided, hey, why don't I try to do something with this? So I started a jelly company. And I right, and I made pomegranate jelly, pomegranate merlot jelly, and a strawberry pomegranate marmalade. I was in uh, multiple stores. I was in Food for Less and Whole Foods, and it was it was a good it was a good learning experience because I started with no experience. I had never made jelly in my life. I just ate it, and so you know I was making uh, syrups for a long time before I actually started making jelly because I couldn't get the thing to gel right. <laughs> it, was a, it was a big learning experience, and I had a lot of syrup for my waffles. So, uh, I did that for a while, then I, I went away from the jelly company to go back to school. I got a degree in business management, um, then I, I really started getting passionate about politics. And uh, not really about politics, but about freedom. And what really inspired me was Obamacare. The idea that the government can tell me that I have to buy this product or this service, just because it's healthcare, healthcare doesn't make it okay. There's no difference between the government telling me you have to buy health care and the government telling me you have to buy a Prius. The principle is the same, and I don't want a Prius, so I don't want to give them the power to tell me to buy health care. And it's just unjust. So I really started to read a lot once Obamacare came down the pipe. So I read a lot of history. I study a great deal of economics. Um, that's really my passion, is studying economics. Um, and I also started to study human nature. And that's something that our founding fathers understood very well, is human nature. And when you give humans power, aka give them the authority to rule and govern, what do they do? What are they inclined to do? What are the results of giving them power? And so I've studied human nature quite a deal, as, quite a bit as well. I was also the founder and chairman of the Stockton Tea Party Patriots. Uh, so the Tea Party is in my blood. Uh, I love you guys. I love what you guys stand for. I love the fact that you love the Constitution and uh, that you're standing for freedom. Uh, I don't think I miss anything more about myself. I'm really not too excited of a guy. Uh, but I am running for assembly. I'm running for assembly for one reason and one reason only. I look around and I do not see the free <coughs> society that our founding fathers fought for. If you want to cut nails, be a, I don't even know what Oh, if you want to cut nails for a living, you want to, if you want to do manicures, you need permission from the government. If you want to cut hair, you need permission from the government. I want you to think about this. If you want to be a lawyer, what, what does being a lawyer necessitate? You have to be well studied in law. You have to know your history. Well, you need a permission from the government to do that as well. You need permission from the government to do everything. That is not the, that is not the type of society our founding fathers fought for. 
for me. Okay? My family, years ago, my grandfather has a, uh, he has a single wide trailer on his property. He had a room to it. Well, about five years later, the county came knock and said, hey, you always permit these. You're going to have to rip down that, that roof. How, how did the government forcing my grandpa to rip down an extra room help society? How does it help the government? It doesn't. By him destroying his property, lowering the value of his property, it lowers the value of the surrounding properties, and it actually hurts the value of society. Government, through its, those actions, is actually hurting people. So I, I want to affect some change. And I want to affect change in the right way. And I want to affect change towards freedom. And so, you know, we live in, in, in perilous times. We live in a time where the, the media describes the health of the economy by how much money the government collects in taxes. <laughs> you know what? I, I tend to think that the free market is independent of the government. I really do. Now, do we need some sort of regulations? Yes. But I think those regulations were established many, many, many years ago, decades ago. We live in a time where both parties are taking from those who produce to give to those who will not labor. And that is the unfortunate fact. We live in a time where if you want to participate in your citizen government, your citizen legislature, you have to be a millionaire in this state if you want to run for, for state assembly. Or you have to be incredibly well-connected. And I'm trying to address that. Uh, and the worst thing of all, as, as Brian was talking about, and somebody brought up here, in this state, we live in a time where we have regulation without representation. And then these same regulatory agencies also enact fees. So we, we effectively have taxation without representation. This is exactly what our founding fathers revolted against. And you are all here, and you're passionate, tell everybody else about it. I talk to people on the other side all the time. Hey, do you believe in regulation without representation? No. Do you believe in taxation without representation? No. Well, then let them know that that's exactly what's going on. So, one, one of my ideas is what I like to call my full-time representation plan. And what this is, is it's addressing steps to make the state legislature work for you instead of the special interests. You are the special interest that matters. But your voice and your vote and your influence has been diluted in this state. And the politicians, they don't tell you how your, your vote is being diluted. So what I want to do is I have my full-time representation plan, and what it seeks to do is design government so that your representatives are accountable to you. We have this idea that simply because we elect our representatives, that somehow our representatives are then there in Sacramento working for us. Well, simply because we elect them doesn't make them accountable to us. You know, our Constitution, everybody thinks the Constitution was there and it's designed to keep government small and keep it limited, right? Well, what is government? <clears throat> it's nothing but a collection of people. So in reality, the Constitution was designed to control people and those who are representing us and their inherent nature to want to get more power and get more control and become more wealthy and powerful. The Constitution was there to enact limits on your representatives so they don't go power crazy. Now the question I ask to you is, what limits do we have here in the state of California on our representatives? None. None. And that's tragic. So a couple of planks of my full-time representation plan. One. I want them to work the first two weeks of the month, and the last two weeks I want them to spend in the district. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, this is great. I think our representatives need to live under the laws that they create. Right now, they get sheltered in Sacramento for seven months. Everybody thinks they have a full-time legislature. In reality, here, here's the hidden secret. They're there for seven months, and they only work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They show up on, mon on Monday, they hit the time clock, then they leave, they go have fun. Then on Friday morning, they hit the time clock, and then they fly home. They're working three days a week, and they're getting paid, when, when you include their per diem, $130,000 a year. Yes. Wow. This is something that needs to be addressed. So under my full-time representation plan, I want to reduce their pay to $60,000 a year. And I do this for a reason. 
Because that's about what the average California working household makes. So if you're going to represent the people, you don't deserve to make double what they make when you're working seven months. <laughs> common sense dictates this, and I think it's time we have some common sense in this state. Um, another thing, that, and, and just for comparison purposes, the average state legislator in the entire United States makes $45,000 a year. Ours are making $130,000. Just think about that. And you're going to have people screaming, oh, they're going to be living in poverty. I don't even make $60,000 a year. I live fine. I really do. Now, another, another plank of my full-time representation plan, like many other states, like Texas, this state needs to start passing a two-year budget. The reason I say this is because, one, it's going to take some of the power out of your representative. So if your representative is there for two years, and they're passing a budget every single year. And that means they have the ability to create law every single year and take money out of your pocket every single year. Well, if you take one of those years out of it, now they only have that ability once. It makes it that, that much less important, which makes you that much more important. But there's another reason. That's because it's beneficial for the economy. If, you're, if your small businesses and your big businesses know what the government's going to do for two years, instead of one, then they're going to be able to project into the future how to allocate their resources and to hire or to not hire. Or, or to you know, invest capital here to have a return on investment. It's beneficial for our economy to have a two-year budget. And we need to stop with these one-year budget gimmicks. That's just ridiculous. And it just makes our representatives that much more important. So that, that's, that's another plank. But here's another grand idea that is just common sense. Uh, somebody, I don't know who it was, somebody was talking about repealing laws. Well, when you're giving your representative the ability to create new laws every single year, why would they want to repeal a law? Yeah. Right? So, so we, once again, we need to design government to work for us. Well, when they get there their first year, they pass the budget for two years. What are they going to do with their second year? Repeal laws. You have an opportunity, exactly, to repeal laws. Not repeal and replace. When we open it up to re repeal and replace, then you have all kinds of fun stuff that can happen. Simply repeal laws. And New Hampshire, they do this. Not only does New Hampshire do this, they give a state dinner in honor of the representative that can repeal the most amount of laws. <laughs> New Hampshire can do it, and, and, and guess what? New Hampshire, according to, uh, according to the George Mason University, is the number one most free state in the entire United States. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so those are a couple of points. Another point, and this is what's most crucial, and this is where your representation is lacking the most. In California, we have 465,000 constituents per assembly member. Now, I'm going to pose a question to you. If I'm representing 465,000 people, am I your representative or your king? Yeah. <laughs> your majesty, I don't know. Exactly, right? In fact, our Senate districts, which have about a million people per, per senator, they be the seventh largest state. Each senator is representing more people than seven governors or six governors out there. That's not representation. So what my plan calls for is to reduce the size of our assembly districts. Okay? People are going to hoot and holler about this, especially the representatives in Sacramento, because as you reduce the size of the districts, you're effectively reducing their power and re reducing their importance. But it's increasing your importance. So just as an example, how large are our districts here in comparison? Well, the state with the second largest uh, assembly districts is Texas at 167,000 constituents. Wow. We're at 465,000. Wow. Nobody's in 200,000s. Nobody's in 300,000s. We're almost at 500,000 constituents. This needs to be addressed. And we wonder why it costs so much money to run for state assembly. How much does it, run to, how much does it cost to run for county supervisor here? 80,000. How much? 80,000. Seriously? Wow, that's a lot of money. What, how, how, many dis, uh, how many constituents per district? 17,000. 
Okay, in my county, you have 130,000 constituents per, per county supervisor, and it'll cost you about 130,000. Same amount of power. The county supervisor in my county has the same amount of power as your county supervisor. Why does it cost so much money in my county and about fifty to $60,000 less? The amount of people you have to reach out to. To run for mayor in Lodi, where I come from, which has 60,000 constituents, costs $50,000. To run for uh, city council in El Grove, costs about $180,000. What's the difference? El Grove has 160,000 uh, constituents. If you want to take money out of politics and increase your representation and, and make sure you have representatives that work accountable to you and not the special interests, you need to reduce the size of the district. And as your representative gets closer to you, then the party becomes less relevant. And it's really about who has the good ideas and who can I trust versus, oh, I'm just going to vote R, 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 or I'm just going to vote D, 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 D. We need to get our representatives closer to the people. And I contend. Until you increase your representation, you will never see any of any any fixes to this state's problem. When you when you seclude 80, 80 assembly members in Sacramento to represent 38 million people, you're not going to get the results you desire. That's crazy. Absolutely not. And furthermore, you have 80 assembly members. 41 needed to pass a bill. You have 40 senators. 21 needed to pass a bill. Governor signed it. 63 people can pass a law which affects the lives of 38 million. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a representative republic or an oligarchy? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, who, who, what does an oligarchy benefit? The people or the few in power? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I hate to say it, but right now, you all are the enemy. We're living in an oligarchy. And so, I think the most important thing that this state needs to undergo is reducing the size of the district. So my plan calls to cut the size of the district in half, from 465,000 to 232,000. Even then, we're still going to be the largest in the nation, but it is going to help take out some of the money. It's going to help take some of the money out of politics. And this is something that needs to happen. Uh, North Dakota, they have assembly size districts of 8,900 constituents per assembly member. <laughs> hey, okay, 8,900, 8,900, 8,900. The state assembly candidate that raised the most amount of money in the entire state raised $16,000. <laughs> and they got beat hard. You know why? When you got just small districts, nobody's going to trust somebody that's coming in and pumping in tons of money. Right. It's personalized. It's not about the money. In California, the assembly race that raised the most amount of money raised eight million. Sixteen thousand to eight million. Oligarchy representation. That's the difference. And so we need to reduce the size of the districts. There's a plan out there that, that some guy's floating about uh, neighborhood legislature where he wants to take each assembly district and uh, divide it into hundred districts and then send one representative from that district to Sacramento to handle the business. I think that's a horrible plan. Because what are you accomplishing? You're accomplishing nothing. Yes, you're taking the money out of running for office, but then you're still concentrating the power in Sacramento. And furthermore, then I think you're making the party structure, aka the Republican Party or the Democrat Party, that much more influential, because now the party's going to dictate who they get to send to Sacramento. And your guy is simply here to vote yes or no. And that's it. They don't get to propose bills, none of that stuff. So his premise is absolutely right. We need to shrink the size of the districts. How he goes about it, I think is wrong. Uh, another thing that my full-time representation plan called for is, before I tell you, how many laws do you think our state legislature needs to pass every single year to secure your life, liberty, and property? None. None? Zero. Okay, bunch of anarchists. <laughs> All right, well, well, currently, under current limitations, each assembly member can propose 50, and each senator can propose 65. For a grand total of 6,600 laws that can be presented every single year, how important are they when they can, when they can create this many laws every single year? I propose to allow each representative to put forth five bills, both in the assembly and in the senate. 
For a grand total of a thousand laws or a thousand bills that can be presented every two years. Okay, this is going to help increase your representation. Because when your representative has five bills versus 50, are they going to give it to the lobbyists or are they going to meet with the constituents and find out what they need? They're going to meet with the constituents. Absolutely. 100%. So that is something that needs to be addressed. 